Summary of the Bridge of San Luis Rey by Thornton Wilder On July 20, 1714, an important bridge outside of Lima, Peru, falls down without notice, killing five people right away. This event, which has never happened before, becomes a symbol for the people of Lima, who can't understand why something so terrible would happen. A friar named Brother Juniper is especially interested. He sees the bridge fall and becomes obsessed with showing that God had a good reason for what happened. To do this, he looks into the lives of all the victims and writes down even the smallest details in a huge book. He thinks that this will help him figure out why God let the bridge fall down. Brother Juniper tries very hard, but he can never figure out what each of his subjects' central passions are, no matter how hard he tries. The book's narrator thinks that he will have the same problems as Brother Juniper, even though he thinks he knows more than him. D.O.A. Mara, the Marquesa de Montemayor, is one of the people who died when the bridge fell. D.O.A. Mara is born the shy and ugly daughter of a wealthy Limean trader. She often fights with her mother and marries a poor nobleman just to get away from home. When she has a daughter named Clara, D.O.A. Mara puts all of her energy and fears into loving her daughter. However, Clara grows up to hate her mother and marries a Spanish count to get away from her. When the Marquesa is left behind in Lima, she starts talking to herself in the street and often doesn't dress herself right. D.O.A. Mara writes her daughter a lot to try to win her love and respect. She turns out to be a good writer, and her dry and funny stories become an important and highly regarded record of her colonial life long after she has died. Pepita, a young girl who grew up in a nearby Catholic home, is the only person who cares for D.O.A. Mara. She learned from the Abbess Madre Mara, a strong woman who runs most of the good works in the city. The Abbess wants Pepita, who is kind and smart, to take over her work after she dies, so she sends her to work for D.O.A. Mara so she can learn more about the world. Pepita doesn't like working for the strange old woman, and she doesn't know that the abbess is training her for a more important job. However, she doesn't say anything because she's poor and doesn't have any ties. Clara tells her mother that she's pregnant in the end. The Marquesa worries a lot about her daughter's health after she hears this news. She writes her many letters full of superstitious advice, and in the end, she chooses to go on a pilgrimage to a shrine outside of the city. She takes Pepita with her across the famous bridge and meditates for a long time in the church. Finally, she feels at peace again when she realizes that she can't change how her daughter's pregnancy turns out. The next day, she and Pepita are on their way back to the city when the bridge gives way. The story moves on to a young man named Esteban, who is also a victim. As a baby, he and his twin brother Manuel are taken to the abbess's orphanage, where they grow up under her strict but kind care. As adults, they work as scribes and people who run errands all over the city. They stay very close and live together, and they even have their own language that they all speak. But one day, the brothers go to the theater, and Manuel falls in love with Camila Paracol, who plays the lead role. He starts hanging out at the theater all the time and can't stop thinking about the paracol. He is thrilled when she calls him to see her one day, but she only wants him to transcribe her letters to her secret boyfriend, the Viceroy of Lima. Since then, he has written her many letters. Manuel's crush puts stress on his relationship with Esteban, who feels cheated that for the first time, his brother has feelings that don't include him. Manuel eventually realizes that he has to choose between his love for the actress and his friendship with his brother. He decides to stay true to Esteban and tells Paracol in a rude way that he no longer wants to write letters for her. Soon after this, Manuel cuts himself on a piece of metal. The cut gets infected, and even though Esteban takes good care of him, Manuel dies after three painful days. Esteban's sadness is almost driving him crazy. He spends all his time wandering the city, and not even the abbess can calm or comfort him. She tries to figure out what to do and sends for Captain Alvarado. The captain is a well-known Peruvian traveler and a friend of both the abbess and D.O.A. Mara. He is always on the move because he misses his daughter, who died when she was young. 
The abbess sends Esteban to look for the young guy because she thinks this man might be able to make Esteban feel better. Esteban is in Cusco, and Captain Alvarado finds him there. He asks Esteban to join his group on the next trip. Esteban agrees at first, but later that night he gets angry and tries to hang himself. Only Captain Alvarado's quick action saves his life. The next day, they are on their way to Lima. When they get to the bridge outside of the city, Esteban crosses before the captain and dies when the bridge falls down. The book then switches to Uncle Pio's story, who is Camila Pericol's acting coach, helper, and manservant. Uncle Pio is the illegitimate son of a Spanish lord. He was born in Castile, but he ran away to Madrid when he was young. There, he works and makes a living by being creative, charming, and smart. Even though he's good at everything he does, he can't stay in one job for too long. His main interest is Spanish writing and theater, which he learns about by working in and around the theaters in Madrid. Uncle Pio runs away from the bad parts of Madrid and goes to Peru, where he meets Camila Pericol, a young girl who has been abused and sings in seedy bars. When Uncle Pio saw how talented she was, he took her home and taught her to sing and act. Eventually, she became a singer and went on tour all over the continent. He is nice to the girl most of the time, but he pushes her hard to get her to do well. Uncle Pio and Pericol eventually go back to Lima, where she becomes the star of the city theater. Her success has made her a little too comfortable and less interested in her work. She becomes the mistress of Don Andres, the viceroy of Peru, and learns to want status instead of artistic success. She quit acting for good, started going to church, and moved to a trendy neighborhood in the hills outside of Lima. She has three children with the Viceroy. Her favorite is the beautiful and kind Jamie. Pericol stays away from Uncle Pio because she thinks he shows how poor she is. The Pericol gets smallpox one day, and she loses her famed beauty. Devastated, the star locks herself in her house, gives away all of her jewels and nice clothes, and doesn't let anyone in. During this hard time, Uncle Pio takes care of her house and children and even gives her money. The Pericol gets mad at him and kicks him out of the house, but he finally talks her into letting Jamie live with him in Lima instead of being stuck in the dark house alone. The Pericol gives in reluctantly. The next day, Uncle Pio puts all of Jamie's stuff in a suitcase and they leave for Lima. As they crossed the famous bridge into the city, they were the last people to die when it fell. After the bridge fell, Brother Juniper is sure that the world's time had come for proof that all events, even the worst ones, happen because God wants them to. He has already tried to prove this idea. When a plague hit his parish, he tried to rate all the people based on how religious they were to see if the deaths made sense. He tried to find patterns, but he couldn't. Now, Brother Juniper starts a thorough study of the bridge collapse, but this is also confusing, he thought he saw in the same accident the wicked destroyed and the good called to heaven early. In the end, the Spanish Inquisition decides that Brother Juniper's book is forbidden, and he is burned at the stake in Lima. The Archbishop of Lima holds a funeral service for all the victims some time after Brother Juniper's death. The abbess goes because she is sad about Pepita and Manuel. She also has to face the fact that without her apprentice, it's unlikely that anyone will carry on her work after she dies. The Pericol also goes to the service. This is the first time since she got sick that she has left her house. After that, she goes to the abbess and asks for spiritual guidance. The abbess listens to the actress talk about her son and her sadness, and then she takes her on a tour of the grounds at her abbey. DOA Clara comes in while the other two women are talking. She also wants advice from the abbess. The abbess makes both women feel better by showing them the abbey and all the ways it helps the poor and orphans in the city. The abbess's drive and kindness give both women ideas. After the guests leave, the abbess stands in the dark yard and thinks about how soon not only Esteban and Pepita, but also everyone who knew them, will be dead and nothing will be left of them, not even a memory. But she is comforted by her view that even memory is not necessary for love and that love keeps the living and the dead connected. About the author 
Thornton Wilder was born in Wisconsin at the turn of the 20th century. Most of his youth was spent in China, where his father worked as an American diplomat. When he got back to the United States, he went to private schools in different states. He started college at Oberlin and finished from Yale. After that, he went to Princeton University to get a master's degree in French literature. After that, Wilder taught English at a high school until his first book, The Bridge of San Luis Rey, was published and brought him unexpected income, speaking gigs, and a Pulitzer Prize. After this, Wilder became one of the most famous and important writers of the 20th century. Some of his friends were Gertrude Stein, Willa Cather, and Ernest Hemingway. Wilder was in the service for a short time during World War I and a long time during World War II. He was a leader on the African front and got medals for it. Most biographers agree that Wilder was gay because he never got married. He spent his later years with his sister Isabella in Connecticut. He died in 1975 in the house they shared. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.